Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking to you all about acne. So I feel like acne is such an important, you know, thing, a common uh, problem that many people go through, and I feel like we should all discuss, you know, um, you know, because I'm pretty sure it's like, put your hands up if you've, uh, you know, faced some acne problems to some extent in your life. Yeah, that's like most of us here. So that's why, you know, 90, I think 95% of 17 to 30 year olds experience um, some acne problems to some extent. So that's why I want to, uh, you know, choose this topic and discuss it. So um, acne occurs in the integumentary system, which is basically um, the external organs that, um, you know, create a division between the external environment and the internal environment. So um, acne occurs in our skin layer, which is part of the integumentary system. Um, so as you can see, this is the three layers of the skin. Um, so we've got the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. So um, acne, it all starts in the pores. So the foundation of what acne happens, like the problems that occur, is in these pores. So as you can see, these are the hair follicles that are in the pores. And here you have a sebaceous gland. So what the sebaceous gland does is it produces this oil called sebum. And sebum, you know, it's a good, it's really important because, you know, we need it to lubricate our skin. So it makes, it protects, like, protects our hair and our skin. However, when this sebum is, you know, overproducing um, and there's too much of it, that leads to our claws, uh, claws, claws, uh, our pores being blocked. And um, also it leads to, um, it leads to like a blockage in the hair follicle, as well as the keratinocytes, which is basically just the skin cells. And basically this like combination of the sebum and the skin cells lead to this bottleneck or this blockage in our pore. And then this blockage leads to, you know, different forms and different types of acne and that causes multiple problems. So, um, so that's what I'm going to go into next. I'm going to be talking to you about the different types of acne. So um, I'm going to start off with a microcomedone. So microcomedones, they don't actually appear on the skin. So you won't see like a bump or anything, but there's different things going inside the cells that tend to lead to those problems. So um, a comedone is basically just a bump on your on your skin, um, but a microcomedone is one that you it doesn't actually appear on the skin surface. So what happens in this is that your skin cells, as I mentioned, the keratinocytes, they become sticky, and so they you know our skin cells, these dead skin cells, need to be like they need to be able to shed easily. However, once they become sticky due to the sebum, the overproduction, as I mentioned, that leads to the keratinocytes being like uh, they they stick to our pore. And so they don't easily shed and then so that production of you know um, of the sebum plus you know these uh, dead skin cells in our pores leads to this once again initial blockage and um, so at that point you know you don't actually see like you know you won't uh, like from like you know your eye you won't be able to see um, a spot on your surface but there is um, that initial you know damage going on inside next um, i'm going to go into the other two different types of comedones so comedones in general they're anti-inflammatory so they won't hurt uh, your skin but these ones these ones are like the more the dangerous you know the more painful ones so um comedones so now i'm going to go into the open comedone which is a white head which you know you might uh, see you know i don't know like near your eyes or like your on your um on your forehead so white heads are open comedones and um, actually, I made a mistake. This one's going to be. This is a closed comedone, and this is an open comedone. So um, in a in an uh, so this is the closed comedone. So what happens is um, the same sort of as I told you the foundation of these problems. So the foundation, the overproduction of sebum and the dead skin cells building up, um, which leads to the blockage. But the difference between a white head and a black head. The reason why it appears black is because oxidation happens so that means there's the presence of oxygen so oxygen for uh, so oxygen reacts um, with the materials inside the pore and that leads to this like dirt like and brown sort of uh, look um, and blackheads I don't know you usually find them on your nose I've got some of myself but uh, blackheads um, what they do is um, they 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 usually are formed near the nose that's because our no uh, our nose has more uh, sebum and sebaceous glands so more oil production which leads to um you know more blackheads near the nose so now so those are the um you know non-inflammatory uh, different sort of uh, acne types and they due to that like overall they're due to the process called follicular hyperkeratinization so that just means um like just loads of skin cells being produced 
and also skin cells just shedding, um, not shedding very quickly. So hyperkeratinization is, as I mentioned, keratinocytes, which are the cells. Hyperkeratinization is the overproduction of these skin cells and the fact that they can't shed. So they don't hurt, these three, they don't hurt, but um, they still cause a blockage in the pore. And so that's what that whole, this all has in common, sebum production, skin cells being blocked, uh, you know, skin cells blocking our pore. Um, so now papules, pustules, uh, nodules and cysts. So I'm going to start with papules. Papules are, um, these are all inflammatory um, spots and in papules, once again as you can see, um, uh, you've got these uh, dead skin cells and these skin cells just like bulging and what these two have in common is that they rupture the follicular wall, so they rupture these, these sides and they don't actually burst but this rupture causes that painful inflammation and obviously our body automatically reacts to this rupture, to this damage and so um, multiple immune cells um, including I think it's like neurophils, neutrophils I don't, um, is one of them but these immune cells they come and they um, start to try to fix up this rupture in the cell wall however the difference between a papule and a pustule is that pustules, as you can see, this, I don't know if you can tell but there's this like liquidy um, effect like right there but that is basically um, pus and pus is this um, white like yellowy liquid that is formed in your skin and that is due to the um, the immune cells um, building up and interacting with the, like other materials and the liquids um, in the pore so that is papules and pustules papules appear um, small and red but they don't initially they don't the pimple hasn't burst yet but pustules um, they have pus inside but they're the same sort of thing then these are the more dangerous ones, dangerous meaning like they hurt the most and they're the most painful and you know we're going more onto like this like higher like severity scale of acne. So in a nodule you have this is when the the follicular walls actually burst and in your pores you have this bacteria which actually causes acne and it's called QT bacterium acne and QT so I'm just going to call it C acnes for short so C acnes um, this bacteria uses sebum as like a nutrient for growth in order to divide and multiply inside um, inside the pore but once the C acnes obviously bacteria causes infections once the C acnes once you know the follicular walls are ruptured and the bacteria goes into the surface it will lead to an infection it will lead to you know those red really painful um nodules and cysts and so the sea acnes will um yeah so will lead to further infections on your skin and that is due to that bacteria and that sort of like explosion um of the of the pore and the difference between nodules and cysts is that as you can see there's like that extra layer um um in the cyst and that is like a whole extra lining and this layering um, that protects the so it basically like creates a barrier between the actual skin and the and the and the cyst so this thick layer um, protects this all of this like material of like the dead skin cells and the pus so once again the difference between a nodule and a cyst is that this one um, doesn't have pus and this one does and so as you can see and this one is like this one hurts a lot more because there is that inflammation just building up due to that thick lining um, acting as a barrier between the skin and um, inside the pore. So those are the different types of acne. I'm gonna go on to the different causes of acne. So um, on once again, you wanna, the, all like the main reason is due to like sebum production um, and that overproduction of sebum that leads to um, acne issues so i'm going to start off with these hormones so we've got testosterone and androgens so we know uh, so these hormones you know they usually you know increase in levels um during puberty that's why you know during puberty loads of people have you know worse cases of acne so um testosterone and androgens they just cause um, an increase in sebum production and that leads to you know a, a more sebum on the surface of your skin as well as inside your pores which leads to the further blockages um, there's also this thing called pomade acne and that's when you know in the hair products of your skin uh, It depends on like what products you use if you use really oily products for your skin It will lead to um, you know if your hair just sits on your skin for a long time You know some people with like fringes that have a lot of hair products on um, in their hair It leads to them having like a really bad severe forehead acne um, Once again, we've also got periods and this also has got to do with like um, hormone levels so your estrogen and progesterone levels drop and this triggers um, an overproduction of sebum 
uh, pregnancy, especially in like the first trimester, you have a lot of hormone levels um, that change and fluctuate, and um, that leads to, once again, overproduction of sebum, leading to acne. And then we've got this thing called polycystic um, ovary syndrome. So it's it's this condition in your ovaries, and that leads to once again um, it causes different hormonal fluctuations. And as you can see, there's like a pattern. Hormones plays a really big part in um, you know causing that um, imbalance of sebum in your in your pores and it, um, causing your sebaceous glands, uh, triggering your sebaceous glands to act in different ways. Um, so yeah, that leads to the hormone fluctu hormonal fluctuations and that leads to uh, sebum production. Then excessive face washing. So obviously when you're washing your face, you think, oh, it's really squeaky clean and you know, you've done a really good job and your pores are all cleansed. However, if you, um, your, your skin is really sensitive and your skin barrier needs to be treated very um, carefully. And so if you wash your face too aggressively, what you're doing is you're basically trapping dead skin cells on the top layer of your skin inside the pores. And so that will lead to, once again, your pores being clogged and that's the whole point of face washing is to not have them clogged. So if you do it gently, it will actually shed the dead skin layers and the extra sebum that sits on your skin. Um, so excessive face washing is a big no. Um, another thing is smoking. So what nicotine actually does is it prevents, um, it does two things. Once again, sebum, it increases sebum production and it also prevents oxygen um, being supplied to our pores. Um, and that leads to like whiteheads and mainly blackheads forming. And also people with like um, like heavy smokers, they usually have these like ice ice pickers, like, like basically like a lot of really bad scarring from um, acne. Um, and that's due to the nicotine and the, the bad effects that nicotine has on the skin. Um, so those are like the main causes of acne um, that I've just discussed. So I'm now going to go on to acne treatments. As you can see, there are loads on here, and obviously I'm no certified dermatologist yet, um, so I can't uh, be the one to say what kind of products to use. But these are like you know, like the common uh, things dermatologists will prescribe um, to you know people with acne. Um, so I'm going to start with ben benzoyl peroxide. I've actually used this myself, and it's very, it's actually been very helpful. But um, there are a lot of like, not necessarily, there's side effects to like all of these products. But what it does is it bleaches your pillow covers and uh, your, t uh, what do you call it, towels and stuff. And um, it can be very, it can be like, it can sting a lot in the beginning initially. But once you use it, your skin um, adapts to, you know, the products and the chemicals inside of it. But basically, benzoyl peroxide as well as um, acnemycin and other sort of, um, other sort of topical agents they are like these gels and these creams and they you apply them um, as like an external thing to your skin and what they do is that they um, they kill the bacteria the sea acnes on your skin as I mentioned they're the ones that cause um, acne and so they kill the bacteria and the thing with benzoyl peroxide and these topical agents is that doctors usually prescribe them with an oral medication so like an antibiotic and this prevents or it reduces the risk of antibiotic resistance. And so once that happens, it can lead to really bad infections. Um, so what topical agents do they use with oral medication in order to prevent antibiotic resistance? So yeah, benzoyl peroxide, use it like once every few days, once every day, other day, and um, it definitely does help with um, acne. Then we've got topical ret retinoids, and they are basically vitamin A based, and they act as exfoliants to shed the dead uh, skin layers from our skin. As I mentioned, if that shedding happens faster, it will prevent um, the dead skin cells uh, blocking our pores. Um, so retinoids are another one. Uh, common retinoids, I'll get onto it later, wherever it is, isotretinoin and tretinoin, those are examples of retinoids. Topical antibiotics as well, basically just antibiotics in like gel or cream form. Um, and then we have azelaic acid, which is also um, really useful in killi uh, killing dead cells. They're already dead. <laughs> the getting rid of the dead cells and also, um, you know, uh, reducing sebum production um, on the skin. Oral antibiotics, as I mentioned, these are more like if you use them on your own, there's a you use it for like six to eight weeks. Uh, obviously, once again, antibiotic resistance, so you shouldn't use oral antibiotics for a really long period of time. Then we've got more of a dangerous one. I keep on using that word, but um, isotretinoin is, or you know, for those who have heard, Accutane. Um, so isotretinoin is a very effective acne product, and it helps tackle all of the 
issues that lead to acne sebum production, getting rid of dead skin cells, um, preventing, preventing cor pore clogging and all of those problems. So, um, however, isotretinoin is a very controversial product um, because it has so many side effects like, you know, your lips will be really chapped and it can lead to birth defects as well. That's why, you know, pregnant women, they do not recommend using it. Um, and multiple things, so due to the severity of this um, uh, oral medicine, um, you know, you have to obviously see a dermatologist and it's only used for like really severe acne cases. Then we've got niacinamide um, and niacinamide is just another sort of like um, ingredient that helps to, it's shown in the past to show um, a decrease in sebum production. Uh, salicylic acid as well, I use myself a salicylic acid cleanser. Once again, targeting the same sort of issues. And lastly, it's a bit of an odd one out, but it's turmeric. And obviously, um, turmeric is this like natural ingredient that everyone uses. It has antimicrobial and inflammatory properties. However, um, so it can, it would be such an essential ingredient to use in like, you know, acne solving products. However, there is so many, uh, it can actually make your acne worse. So um, unless in the future they come up with like this medical product um, that integrates turmeric um, as one of the ingredients, um, like turmeric, don't just dump turmeric on your face. Uh, I've been, I've done my own home remedies as well. Um, and uh, yeah, you don't wanna just use home ingredients as a way of curing your acne, even though there's a load of promotion of that on TikTok and et cetera, et cetera. So um, I want to go on to the common acne misconceptions. So these are like the two main ones that I feel like they do come up often, uh, especially the first one. I've heard that from my mom myself. But acne is caused by a poor diet. So acne, I watched a video and a dermatologist said that unless you literally rub pizza on your face, diet and acne don't have like an actual link um, to it. Um, diet does like, yeah, like, yeah, that's just, th that, th yeah, diet and acne just don't have um, a direct link. However, there are further scientific experiments and researches going on into trying to find that link. Popping pimples makes them go away sooner. So temporarily, yes, popping your pimple will make them go away. But as a long term, that can just lead to the C. acne's bacteria inside the pore just infecting the area around. And there is, like, you can actually um, go to dermatologists and they can, like, professionally remove um, you know the pus inside of an acne as that's what causes the in inflammation etc um, they use this this steroid and they inject it and it helps um, it reduce the inflammation but obviously that steroid if you use it too much it can cause a lot of side effects but um, overall you don't want to touch um, you know you don't want to touch your um, pimples and you know, make it worse. And other tips would be, you know, these are the acne misconceptions, but other tips um, may include, you know, using um, products that have non comedogenic on it. And that just means they don't, they aren't pore clogging. They don't have any ingredients that would clog your pores. So finding products that say non comedogenic on it um, would be very helpful if you're trying to look for acne um, or like face washes and moisturizers. And also, as I mentioned, don't uh, wash your face aggressively, don't touch your face a lot, change your pillow covers a lot, all of these little things that you can integrate in your lifestyle can help relieve um, the stress of acne. So last thing I want to finish off is acne scarring, and this is what comes after acne, and we have the two main different types, post-inflammatory erythema and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So as you can see, the main difference, this one is more red and this one is darker. And so it's dependent on like your skin um, type. So if you have darker skin types, you're most likely to have post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and lighter skin types are mo most likely to have, I'm just gonna say PIE, it's really long, and PIH. Um, but yeah, you're most likely to have um, post-PIE. Um, so what happens in this one is that the blood vessels, they dilate and they lead to redness. Um, they dilate and they, really, they lead to um, redness on the surface of your skin. And then hyperpigmentation is due to this overproduction of melanin in one area. And the reason this happens is all of these are like immune responses. They're trying to heal. So acne is basically like a wound on your skin and your body is try tries to fit, obviously restore and, uh, fix, and uh, fix this wound. So all of that leads to um, the overproduction of melanin in one area and d uh, the dilation of blood vessels. And that's so immune cells can um, reach that area and fix it. And that leads to the redness. And these are the two different types of scarring. So yeah, thank you for listening.
how you said um, diet doesn't actually relate to acne or bile, like when you have oily foods and stuff and then you get acne straight after that. Does that happen? Uh, that's the thing, that's what I meant. Like scientists haven't found that direct link um, to oily foods leading to acne. It's unless oil is literally put onto your skin, um, then that's what causes that. But there has been shown, it has shown like certain ingredients can lead to different fluctuations in your body. So um, they're trying to find a more direct link with that and then they can come up with to see if there's a direct link. But yeah. Yeah? Does drinking water do anything to your acne? Um, no, I don't, I don't, I haven't looked into this myself, but I don't think water has acne healing properties. I think um, water has things to do with like boosting your collagen and just, you know, restoring, you know, minerals and stuff to your skin. So yeah, I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with acne, but yeah. Any other questions? The stinging is like a common side effect of these like topical agents. Bleaching, the bleaching doesn't harm you, it harms the pillow cover. Yeah, but, but like, <laughs> that's strong. Like, that's, yeah, that's strong, the whole point. You need really like strong things to affect acne. Obviously niacinamide at low percentages and salicylic acid at low percentages are less intense, but if you have severe acne or if you've been dealing acne for a long time, you'd want something that just causes a bit of stinging to get rid of that. Like I know for myself, like I'm trying to deal with so many things. Um, using benzoyl peroxide on a short term, it helped very quickly to help my acne, even if it meant a bit of bleaching or pillow covers or whatever. But yeah. <laughs>